in this film. Over the next one week, I'm going to be showing you what it's like to visit the Isle of Wight, just off the south coast of the UK. From the cycling adventures on offer all round the island, through to all of its rich history and cultures. You'll see me nerd out on a castle, but I'll also show you the fun, the thrills, and the spills. No! Despite living in the UK for almost all of my life, this is only the second time I've visited the island, with the last being around 20 years ago. But with domestic travel becoming more popular in light of Covid, I thought it would be a perfect time to check out and show you all another great spot within the UK. Now, if you're thinking where is the Isle of Wight, it's here, off the south coast of the UK near Portsmouth and Southampton. And that's just where we're headed first, taking the two hour coach from London. Step one of the journey complete, we're in Southampton where we've got a little bit of time before we're going to get the free shuttle down to the ferry terminal. We had a few hours in Southampton before our ferry, so checked out some of the city's sites down by the harbour. Southampton is a major port city famous for being the departure point of the Titanic, but has also seen the creation of the Spitfire and been home to Jane Austen, while the walls resemble its strong medieval history in the wars against the French. The old city area is also a great spot for trying some of the local foods and drink. But the clear highlight for me is the Dancing Man Brewery. Cheers to Southampton, very very short stay here, just a couple of hours, getting a bit of food. But I found a local brewery, some local pale ales. This one's nice and late IPA, death to the organ grinder. That tastes of holiday. But as awesome and chilled as this spot was, it was easy to forget something. Oh, I just had a mad rush to the ferry terminal, because having a bit too many extra beers where, uh, yeah, having too much fun, they went to completely the wrong ferry terminal, but now we finally actually made it. Isle of Wight ferries are easily bookable online, and we paid just over £30 for an open return on the fast boat. and in a little under 30 minutes, we were arriving at the Isle of Wight. For the duration of our stay on the island, we were based in the town of Cowes, famous for its yachting and sailing. Many of Cowes' buildings are colourful terraces and its harbourfront street is full of pubs and restaurants. We're going to be doing a heap of activity throughout the week, but while the sun stayed out, there was only one way to spend the first night of this trip. What a perfect way to spend first evening here. You got a sunset, you got fish and chips on a pier. No one else thought to have the same idea as us. So, woo! Nighttime beach strolls. Yeah, all these, this is where all the young people come to hang out, which is why we're here, because we're totally part of those. But you probably can't hear me because of all the wind, but it's really nice. Just literally five minute walk from Cowles Town Centre. Now, I should show you the Airbnb studio we've got uh, for this week long trip. Now, we're going in August and staycation, 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 as all you've been hearing about, international travel is only opening up and we left this quite late. But, it must have been an opening or something, but we managed to find this studio uh, right in the middle of Cowes, perfect low central location, and for the whole week, and for a pretty reasonable price as well. But just to show you around, 
So obviously we have the clothes explosion that happens when obviously you travel. This bathroom, sort of like its own little sort of cavern, which is, I've never had this before, but pretty fun. Out here we have sweet, big kitchen. So who knows, might do some cooking here, we'll see. But the party piece of the place, and here we go. Upstairs, the bedroom is up a ladder. And we'll see what happens after a lot of alcohol is consumed. But for now, that's pretty sweet. And my, hopefully my fear of heights doesn't come into it too much, but I think we've done pretty well here. Today we're on a path following an old railway line. We're going from Cowes in the north to Newport in the middle. Uh, it's about four miles, 7.5 kilometers. Um, so let's just there in front as well. And on the left, we have uh, the Medina, River Medina, which goes sort of from Cowes all the way sort of down to centre. And on the right, we have all lots of lush farmland. Don't know if you know much about the Isle of Wight, but it's quite green. Uh, in the centre, it's quite hilly, a few sort of areas of natural beauty, which hopefully we'll get to later today. But at the moment, just walk through lots of farmland. This is just sort of a big tunnel of greenness right now, not that exciting. And just one word to note on this, make sure you wear good shoes when you go for a hike. Otherwise, you end up with passengers, like this one in front, who's got a nice big blister on the bottom. So, always pay and get good comfortable shoes guys this path now actually is um, used a lot with cyclists so in a couple of days we're going to hire some bikes and we'll be zooming up here again to go and see lots more of the island but that's going to be pretty sweet yeah yeah can't wait Woo! And eventually, after walking over four miles through beautiful scenery, we made it to Newport, the Isle of Wight's biggest town. So we've made it to the town of Newport, um, an hour and a half later after we started, so pretty good going. Um, quite nice, quite little town, sort of kind of old school again, but not a great deal we're passing through. And if you know me, we've got some really exciting historical stuff coming up, which I love. So another point to note, when you're coming to these quiet places like this, always check the times of the places you're trying to see. We just arrived at the cool special Roman villa, but closes at 3 and last entry is 2.30. And so with uh, blister foot over there, it's been a bit of a mad dash to get here. And we've literally just gonna make it. Don't know if you can see, but it's 2.27. And here we go. Roman Villa time. For me, this is very exciting. They better let us in, otherwise, there'll be words to be said. We'll write a very angry letter to them. This is the old bathhouse in the villa. There are a number of Roman villas dotted across the Isle of Wight, but Newport is widely regarded as the best preserved. The small museum is also very informative and tells of how Roman soldiers were gifted these farmlands for completing their service. Outside you can also see the external walls which have been really well preserved. That was actually a really really cool little museum, uh, really well presented and four pounds, four pounds to get all of that. Um, so highly recommend if you are in this part of town, say Newport, not a great deal else in the town itself. I do have to walk a bit to it but I got my ancient history film, so thanks to Alessia for that. It was then super easy to get back to cows using the local bus network. But for seeing the whole island, there's an even better way to get around. So today we're taking it up a couple of notches. We've hired some bikes for the next two days. First day we're going to go all the way out to the west of the island. We're going to go to the famous Needles, where everyone goes to. It's going to be about 22 kilometers, maybe two hours or so. And then when we're there, hopefully weather dependent, we can get on a boat and go actually up close to them. Um, and then maybe do some cliff top sort of cycling as well, get some different views of the place. But now I'm going to transfer to Helmet Cam. Let's go on way.
We are going to be covering about 45 kilometers over the return journey to the coast, and it wasn't all going to be easy. Oh, so I'm not, not sure if you can hear me, but this is quite hilly. But look at the views all around. We've got about another 15 closer to so that way. En route, we were able to stop off at a llama and alpaca farm. Now this might not be riveting video, but it just goes to show what variety there is along one cycle journey. Go! You better go fast! I'm gonna get ya! But then it wasn't long before we then made it to the far west coast of the Isle of Wight and the famous Needles landmark attraction. Actually, this place is a pit of a circus. You've got queues of traffic that we've just cycled through. It's the queue for the chairlift down to the beach. It's crazy, it's just, just mental. It's actually a bit of a circus. Sadly, that chairlift queue was just too long for the amount of time we've got here, so... The views were already incredible, but as you can hear, the wind is pretty crazy, and it was about to inconvenience us a bit more yet. Sadly, it looks like no boat to the doors. Uh, rough weather for the seas. We're going to wait a minimum of an hour, maybe an hour and a half or so, for two boats in as well. Uh, instead, we're going to get back on our bikes, go all the way back up to the top, maybe go to the view points over there to look down on it. Next best option is what happens when you're travelling, you've got to be flexible, you've got to move things around. Yeah. Back up on the cliff tops, we reach the old battery run by the National Trust. It might also just be one of the windiest places on earth. Probably can't hear a single word I'm saying because it's very, very windy. But it's really just, it's really difficult weather conditions in the entire island. But this is an old battery. Going to put it down position. I'm going to tell you the history right now. The old battery dates from the early 1860s. It was part of a chain of defences built to protect the naval dockyards at Portsmouth, mostly in response to the rise of France and Napoleon III. The battery stayed in use right to the end of World War II when it was finally decommissioned. It's also one of the best spots to view the needles from land, with my pick being the old searchlight and lookout point. Then there is also the various trenches and gun positions from the top, if you're willing to battle the insane winds. sea level and ready for the ride back, it was time for a little public service announcement. So, for many of you like me who aren't avid cyclists, um, cycling for miles and miles and miles makes your arms really hurt on these seats. So, I've come up with something for you. I call it the Fleece Comfort 5000. And it works simply like this. You just put a nice big comfy fleece <laughs> in your shorts, in your trousers, you've got a cushion. It doesn't exactly work, but I'm going to be on this one. No, you sleep hanging out. <laughs> I don't know why, but you just look so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, push. 
I'm not going to lie here, that 45 kilometer hilly cycle was quite painful and I was so glad to get back. But I wasn't able to rest for too long as the next day we were back out on our bikes again, heading to the southeast of the island. Our aim today was to travel along the Red Squirrel cycle trail to the seaside town of Sandown, where we thought we could do some paddleboarding. This route follows stretches of what was once an old railway line between some of the various towns of the Isle of Wight. Thankfully for the morning, this also meant the path was going to be flat. Being on a dedicated cycle trail was so much better compared to the previous day on the road. and meant we could enjoy more of the island's natural beauty along the way. But after a couple of hours we made it to the cold English sea and got straight onto our boards. Uh oh. Ah! You crashed! Ah! With annoyingly wonky GoPro footage, I soon managed to get the hang of it despite the wind and rain and I was soon standing up and making progress. But as ever, I spoke too soon. Oh, no! And that's my first time paddleboarding. Really, really good fun actually. Uh, definitely going to do it again. Hopefully, in more warmer waters. So I just get a little bit choppy up towards the end, but in the end, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Ten pounds per person per hour, and you come to here. Sand down, bike down, beach higher. After a pint to celebrate our bravery in the English Sea, we were back on the trail, but this time our route back was through the hills and areas of natural beauty in the centre of the island. Woo! Very good side, but look at this for a biking route. <coughs> Pretty cool big gatehouse. I think it goes to a big old house back there. Just gonna see if we can go through it or. Well, this is the, otherwise it's a dead end, so we'll find out. But sadly for us, the further we went into the countryside, the worse the weather turned. So, pretty much halfway back now, if not more, from like sand down Shanklin on the beach. I've just done the Roxall railway path, uh, but as you can see, it's the weather's completely changed. Mm. It's the wind blowing in our faces. We've got rain coming down. It's pretty grey. Refreshing. refreshing is one word, but it's pretty pretty miserable. Um, so, given that you probably don't want to see much of that, we're probably not going to film the rest of it. We've still got another eight nine miles to go just to get back to cows. We've got some pigs grunting at us mm. uh, behind us. And you've got the fleece five thousand keeping you through. The fleece comfort five thousand is just about honestly the <laughs> the the arse pain has been absolutely something else, something I've never experienced in my life. <laughs> But that's what happens when you do a 36 miler and then another 30 miler in two days. Um, but yeah, absolutely just going to smash it back to cows now. So <laughs> see you later. And there it is. I'm done. 30 miles plus whatever. I don't God knows how much it was today. Probably like 70 altogether in two days. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Enjoy it though? It was good. Feel like, yeah, good lungs after today. Would you do it again or a smaller amount? 10 times more next time. Okay, I'm not going away with her again. I've got but, the booties uh, for it now. So. Oh god, that's, I'm not walking for a week, but <laughs> here is our mighty steeds. We'll be, we'll be saying goodbye to these in the morning. Uh, but yeah, cycling, great way to discover Isle of Wight. Yeah. yeah. You can get around really easily, good cycle It's not a flat aisle. No, no. Morning. Yeah, it's... and when there's something says it's like an hour, it's actually about two. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> no. But after the natural beauty of the island, we turned our attention to the history and cultural side, starting with Carisbrook Castle in Newport. 
So legs aching from yesterday's, well last few days of big cycle, but we're here and now it's Carisbrook Castle, making our way uphill. Um, really, really interesting facts about this castle, which you're going to find out in just a minute when I speak over some of the things you're about to see. You excited for, excited for some big history? Very excited. Big castle history. Carisbrook Castle. Yeah, unless you've already Woo! been slightly briefed on how amazing this place is going to be, so the excitement is there um, and as always I get my history fix and I get to bore you about it as well. I get a free tour guide. Exactly, exactly. We don't need to spend all this extra money on the tour guides here. You just do what I do and read Wikipedia first and then repeat it. <laughs> Carisbrook Castle is owned and managed by English Heritage and adult tickets cost £12. That might be on the steep side, but there is plenty to see, and I was busy for over an hour and a half in total. For those castle fans amongst you, Carisbrook is a prime example of a 12th century Norman Mott and Bailey castle. Before this, the site was occupied since before the Romans, and was a Saxon stronghold before the Norman invasion. In the later Middle Ages, the castle held out in defence of the Royalists in the English Civil War and soon had a high profile guest. So behind me is the room where King Charles I actually held his imprisonment in the house. And twice tried to escape through these windows, failing each time apparently because he was too fat. The Elizabethan mansion also describes the imprisonment of Charles' other family members and still contains some of his personal belongings from clothing to letters of conspiracy. Back outside you can climb the walls and walk the entire perimeter of the fortress as well as see how commanding the views would have been. A lot of stairs. Steep stairs. The old Norman keep is best saved for last in my opinion. This was the centre of the entire fortress in its prime and has the best views of all. This is the top of the keep, the main castle here, and the views are just pretty sensational. It's complete 360 everywhere. See what a great spot this would have been for Castle. Got to admit, someone who's been and seen their fair share of castles, this one's pretty impressive. Certainly one of the best I think I've seen. Um, so many different stories in Asia over the hundreds of years. Gets a 10 out of 10 for me this one. Definitely highly recommend coming to Carisbrook. Cowes is also home to one of the UK's last remaining chain-pulled floating bridges, and for £1.50 return we headed to the eastern side for one of the Isle of Wight's other big treasures. Osborne House was built in the mid-19th century as Queen Victoria's summer and rural retreat. Prince Albert designed the palace himself in the style of an Italian Renaissance palazzo, or as we know it, palace. Queen Victoria said it was impossible to imagine a prettier spot, and it's easy to see why. Inside, the rooms are as beautiful and ornate as you'd expect from a rural residence, but it's also got its interesting stories. Osborne was the royal's favourite location, but after Prince Albert died in 1861, Victoria no longer held traditional gatherings here such as Christmas and in 1901, Victoria died peacefully here as the longest reigning monarch at the time. Osborne House completed, another success. Good, like the castle, another excellent thing to go to. Um, more English heritage uh, stuff. Uh, quite expensive this was, like £20 each to get in, but 
the gardens were absolutely beautiful. Some of the rooms in the palace were amazing. And yeah, some cool history to go with it. So we feel very cultured now, but that's I think is almost pretty much the end of our culture on this trip. Now it's more about showing you actually what Nala White has to offer in the evenings and in the food side of things. A fitting way to end this trip is to tell you all about the food and the evening fun you can have in the small town of Cowes. Being a maritime base, the town is perfect for super fresh seafood as well as other European cuisines given the amount of travellers that come through the town. So the top tips from us include smoking lobster for seafood, the Basque kitchen for amazing tapas and meat and then the Vectis tavern which parties through till gone 2am. All of this combined can end up in some pretty mashed up camera chat and the invention of the world's best sangria. And we've upped this sangria game. I think we made this sangria more, more potent than ever. I think we're going to go on the Hall of Fame, actually. Deli. When you order a sangria, um, get an extra shot of port, and then when that's not strong enough, get a shot of brandy in as well. And with that, hangovers aside, comes the end. Sad faces. All yeah. over. That's Alan White done. Sad times. The good sun skins off. Yeah, beautiful. Well, all the, way, all, the, all, the good, all the good weather's come at the end of the holiday, typical. But... And all of next week. Exactly, all next week back in London, back at work. We didn't do your sun dance like we talked about. We didn't do a good enough sun dance. No, I think you didn't. You didn't do anything. Yeah. So.